Hey YouTube, uh, my name is Carol. How you all doing? Uh, this is technically my uh, first video as a budding YouTuber. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've been too busy. And uh, say hi to Nala. She's my my dog, and uh, I actually have five dogs and two cats, um, which is good because they're really helping me uh, to keep me company during this time and. Um, I think you can kind of guess uh, what this video is about because um, basically I'm from Malaysia and um, about two days ago in, on the 16th of March the Prime Minister of Malaysia announced a partial lockdown or more like a restricted movement order for the whole country. So I'm just shooting this in my room and uh, I've been stuck at home all day uh, working at home and um, yeah and <laughs> and that's gonna be life for the next two weeks uh, for everybody so basically uh, what happened here in Malaysia was um, you know we started off in the end of January 2020 with only about like slightly uh, less than 10 cases and most of them came in from China so all of us were like yeah it's okay you know these idiots coming in from China the tourists uh, they weren't spreading it around, you know, they were quarantined, so everyone thought it was fine. Um, and then uh, in February, it went up to 22 cases. Uh, still, most of them were China tourists. So everyone was still thinking, okay, this is still okay, you know, it's only 22, and it was there. Uh, the numbers stayed at 22 for quite a while, and uh, didn't show any increase for quite some time. Um, but now... One month later, um, the number of cases uh, today uh, have shot up to like 790. So uh, I made a prediction actually on the 14th of March uh, because I have a blog at uh, relolo.blogspot.com. I'll post the link later. And, and I made a prediction uh, at that time it was about 400 cases or so. And um, I've been following you know, news from all around the world uh, on DW and various other news channels on YouTube and I could see that things were just getting very quickly from bad to worse and the number of cases in other countries were just shooting up so fast and containment was getting very difficult and this virus was definitely um, not something to be taken lightly. But a lot of people in my country were still taking it lightly. They didn't see the threat. They, they just kept going around their day and doing things as they normally do and it was just getting more and more worrying and so on the 14th of March I, I posted on my blog and um, I actually compared the graphs of the rate of increase over time for all the different countries um, quite a few different countries and yeah it all showed exponential growth and Malaysia we're showing the same pattern of exponential growth, but at the time we only had 400 something cases. Whereas other countries like Italy, uh, Italy at the time was like 17,000 cases, uh, Iran was uh, 11,000 cases, and then few other countries were like two to 3,000 cases, all showing the same exponential growth pattern, and Malaysia was on the same path. And so I knew that a lockdown was coming. I actually knew it. Uh, quite some time ago and I started stocking up uh, on essentials a few weeks ago you know because uh, I live mostly by myself uh, I have a tenant um, she has her own room so we don't interact that much uh, other than my, that I, it's just me and my dog so um, every time I went shopping I just bought a little bit extra I bought extra dog food uh, I bought extra canned food and stuff that I knew that would last, uh, frozen food that would last and um, yeah I could see it coming, I knew that it was coming and I didn't know, I knew a lockdown was probably gonna come in some form or another but I didn't know how bad it would be because uh, you know I was hearing stories of China where uh, the Chinese people were being locked down in their homes and weren't allowed to go out and well I didn't think it was gonna be that bad in Malaysia uh, it was probably going to be something more like Italy where the movement would be not completely locked down but just restricted but still I just wanted to be safe so I stocked up on some stuff so anyhow uh, so my prediction came true the lockdown no, not a lockdown but the restricted movement order was announced 
on the 16th of March, uh, which was this Monday. And yeah, and things just were, I mean, I predicted it and I knew it was coming and I knew it was necessary because every other country was the rates of the cases were going up so fast. I could see the same pattern in Malaysia and I knew that we needed a lockdown and I was going on Twitter and I was like tweeting to our health ministry and saying, look guys, this is getting really bad and we need, you need to do something decisive and you need to, yeah, just act and, and curb this thing. And, and our ministry was really slow. Our ministers was really slow. And if you don't know, uh, our government in Malaysia, they changed quite recently in uh, like last month. So our prime minister resigned and that resulted in the whole cabinet dissolving. And so they had to get a new prime minister, which was not elected. And we had, um, and the new prime minister nominated a whole bunch of new ministers. So our government is actually really, really new. And I knew that it was a bad thing to happen at this time when the, when the COVID-19 was going around and, uh, yeah, things were just getting from bad to worse and I, I, I was like, wow, our government is new and they need time to learn the ropes of how to do things and we're in the middle of what's going to be a epidemic or pandemic very, very soon. And it all came true as I predicted and lockdown happened. And uh, what happened after that? Well, even though the lockdown happened, it, it I don't really think that it will help much because um, there were before the lockdown was actually announced, uh, the Prime Minister had announced on the 12th of March that all mass gatherings would be cancelled or uh, were not allowed. But there were still several mass gatherings. In fact, the number of cases, the reason why the number of cases shot up really fast here was because of one uh, mass gathering in the uh, end of February which was a Muslim mass gathering, they call it a tablet event, where there was about 14,000 participants in this event in Kuala Lumpur. And from that uh, event alone, the majority of the cases that we see now, uh, the big spikes in numbers, uh, came from that event. Uh, or rather, a number of cases came from that event and they probably spread it, spread it around to quite a few other people. So. So after that event, the Prime Minister announced on the 12th of March, no more mass gatherings. But still, on the 13th of March, there was another event in Penang, which is another state in Malaysia, where 30,000, I mean 30,000 people went for this event, uh, a Hindu lights thing, celebration kind of religious thing. Uh, 30,000 30, people. Uh, were there and um, they were gathering again in a mass gathering and um, <clears throat> fortunately so far there have been no uh, confirmed cases yet you might think that I'm one because I just coughed <laughs> but so far there have been no confirmed cases yet from that event but still it's 13 March and the event you know I mean it's only it's now 18th of March it's only been five days and the incubation period can be two weeks or more so most likely in about a week or so, we we'll, might start seeing some cases coming out of that event. And still, <clears throat> there were other events like a uh, travel fair where there were also quite a few thousand people. There was some fishing event, which was not really big. It was 1,400 people, but still considered a mass gathering. But <laughs> yeah, so basically all these mass gatherings were still going on even though the Prime Minister announced no mass gatherings. and. I'm not sure how that happened or why that happened or why it wasn't stopped, but it is what it is. And to make matters worse, after the Prime Minister announced the restricted movement order on the 18th, not the 18th, the 16th of March, um, you know, everything just went haywire, people were panic shopping, uh, and then, you know, the following day, which was 17th, they announced that there would also be no interstate travel. Uh, so that was not part of the original restricted movement order. The original restricted movement order basically said that Malaysians uh, could not fly out of Malaysia, no travel outside of Malaysia, um, and all businesses would have to shut down. Sorry, that's my dog. Uh, all businesses that were non-essential had to shut down, except for like water, 
the government related uh, departments that have to control utilities um, postal and uh, groceries and shopping so all these are still open people can still buy essentials but all other non-essential businesses have to close uh, for two weeks from the 18th to the 31st of March okay so what was not in the or original restricted movement order was the directive that uh, no interstate travel was allowed but that came into effect uh, supposedly almost it actually it, it, it came it, it, so it came into effect for a short while on the 17th and then um, what the, to the government said was anyone who wants to travel in between states has to sign a form or uh, go to the police station and sign a form and you can guess what happened after that you had a whole bunch of people you know going to the police stations and uh, trying to sign the form and they were all lining up in super huge queues because everybody wanted to go back and and I can't we can't really blame all the people who wanted to go back because um, the universities were closed the colleges were closed the hostels some of them for God knows what reason also decided to close so where where were the students supposed to go except back to their hometowns so it was a very uh, poorly planned decision by the government and uh, they got a lot of flack for that <sighs> so basically there were a lot of mass gatherings that resulted from this uh, restricted movement order and uh, and in the end they they made I mean the 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 right the directive to restrict no it just uh, to restrict interstate travel was actually a good one it was just poorly implemented I don't know why they needed a form and because of that and because of so many people lining up outside of the police stations uh, basically the government then decided to rescind the order and they allowed everybody to go back to their villages which um, is even worse so. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It, it basically means that everyone from the main cities like Kuala Lumpur are going back to their families, to their villages, uh, to see their parents. Most of them are probably elderly people, uh, grandparents, and these are the people who are most at risk for the virus. And these people are going back and potentially spreading the virus to them. So. I don't know. It was a really, really bad decision, and yeah, I mean, uh, at first, initially, I was kind of glad that the restricted movement order was uh, initiated, but now I'm just thinking that um, I think it's too late. <laughs> I think it's really too late because we, our government, made a few mistakes. And our people are, we're not taking it seriously, and uh, we're another we're not a developed country. We're considered an underdeveloped country. I'm sorry, my dog is scratching my bed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're considered an underdeveloped country. We have a lot of maybe poorly educated people, people who don't speak English, and they're not really kept abreast on what's happening around the world in other countries. So, and even though, you know, even people in, um, in developed countries like Italy, the number of cases are still shooting up. So what chance do, do people like, you know, people in my country who is considered, which is considered underdeveloped, um, what chance do we have to really educate all these people and to teach them the importance of, uh, you know, maintaining hygiene, not going anywhere, not having mass gatherings and all this stuff. So for me, you know, I was hoping that the order or the restricted movement order would help to curb the cases. But after these few mistakes um, and after the several mass gatherings that happened, even though they weren't supposed to happen, I think we won't be able to contain this virus. And it's probably going to still shoot up easily to over 10,000 cases, 20,000 cases, like what's going on in other countries. Uh, and in one month, we'll probably be at the same place where Iran and Italy are now. Sorry to say, but yeah, that's just gonna happen. So, our restricted movement order, which is gonna be until supposedly until 30th March, 31st of March, um, is very likely gonna be extended. So, anyhow, that's the situation now in Malaysia.
And I think a lot of people around the world are going through the same thing. And uh, I just want to, you know, I just want to share with you how I feel about it. I mean, um, I am naturally an introvert. I think, uh, uh, I mean, there are a lot of introverts in the world who are like, yeah, okay, uh, social distancing. Yeah, we've been doing that. We're used to it. We can handle it. <laughs> but I also know there's a lot of um, people who are extroverts. They like going out. They like... They revel in being among people and, you know, having to self-quarantine and not uh, interact with other people, I'm sure must be a huge pain. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good time to just try and reflect and think about life and do something to develop yourself. Maybe, like, learn a new hobby and all those kind of things. So, but yeah, basically, if you're feeling really... Um, down or bored or not sure what to do um, just try to be patient because it's it's uh, I know it's tough uh, but it's really important that everyone does stay at home at this time whichever country you're from uh, so, so social distancing is very important because that is the main way that the virus is spreading from people to people when you touch them and you shake their hands when they, even you talk to them so we don't really know why this virus is so contagious um, but the only way that we can really spread, stop it from spreading is just avoid contact with people. Which again, introverts know how to do that. <laughs> so like I said, I usually am pretty much by myself at home. Uh, it's not much change of lifestyle for me personally because uh, yeah, I have, I have uh, my five dogs and my two cats to, to keep me company. I'm not married, I don't have a boyfriend. Uh, my parents are living away so I think I'm fairly good and uh, my chances of getting infected are hopefully not that high unless I got it from someone at that the office or you know when I was going grocery shopping or something. So we never know. Anyone could get it. Anyone could get it. So I think what we've seen from this is um, we a lot of people think that it's not going to happen to them. Yeah, they're immune or you know the chances of getting the virus are very low. And I've seen that going around, you know, the chances of you getting the virus are less than if you got into an accident or something like that. Yeah, technically speaking, now, yes, maybe, but at the rate that the virus is spreading and how contagious it is, people are predicting that the, the virus, or scientists are predicting that uh, 60 to 80%, 60 to 80% of the entire world's population is going to get this virus. And even though um, only about maybe 3.8%, I don't know, maybe 2 to 5% of people who get it will die. And most of them will probably be the elderly. Uh, that still doesn't absolve us of responsibility to take care of ourselves. And it's also not true that it's only an old person's disease because even people as young as in their 30s um, have passed away from this virus. So even in my country, in Malaysia, uh, the first case who died was a 34-year-old male with no previous conditions, and he died. Uh, the other, not, uh, yeah, we had another case uh, who was a 60-year-old, uh, but really to have a 34-year-old pass away from this disease was um, not to say very shocking because I know the first China doctor who, who passed away was also around in his 30s. And so I knew it wasn't true that everyone says that, oh, it's just an old person's disease, you know. I don't know why they say that anyway, because aren't old people important as well? Why, why would you even say that? Isn't it our responsibility to help take care, take care of them as well? Uh, so anyway. So yeah, uh, basically anyone can be a carrier. So even though you're younger, uh, those 20 years old and younger and small kids, fortunately at this time, don't seem to be badly affected or suffer any negative health uh, impacts from this virus. Uh, it doesn't mean that they can't spread it. But uh, so far, the data shows that children uh, have not been suffering from it or, you know, dying or anything like that. So, that's good. That's great. But potentially, they can still catch the virus and still spread the virus. So, not that great. So, young people don't think that you're off the hook. You are also so socially responsible to um, do your part to reduce the cases. And the reason for this is because we really need to not uh, overwhelm the medical hospitals, the medical systems. Because there's only a certain number of ICUs, uh, there's only a certain number of beds that's uh, in these hospitals. And 
in countries like Italy and France and sorry Italy and uh, well firstly China South Korea Italy and Iran and now so many countries in Europe um, all are getting overwhelmed really quickly by this virus so you know even though the death rate is low the hospitalization rate is probably around 10 to 20 percent I think cases need to go to the hospital and if you have so many cases hundreds and thousands and thousands of cases at the same time the hospital systems just can't cope so this is why we need we need to have lockdowns and we need to have restricted of movement, restrictions of movement and this is what's happening all around the world yeah anyway <sighs> so again um, that's my update on what's happening in Malaysia and I kind of want to talk about oh, I don't know I want to talk more about how to get through this uh, living indoors and stuff like that and you know because as an extrovert extrovert it's not an extrovert I'm an introvert <laughs> I do have a certain amount of experience you know living by myself and pretty much uh, social distancing most of my life <laughs> so I guess you could say I'm an expert in uh, social distancing <laughs> So yeah, um, but it's getting a bit late here. I need to go to bed. So I just yeah, that's my that's my first update about the lockdown in Malaysia. I'll be updating more in the future, and um, yeah. So you guys just uh, take care. Try not to to get too upset about this lockdown. I know it's really hard for a lot of people. Um, I consider myself fortunate because I have a good income and a stable job, but. Even with a stable job, the um, the possibility of getting losing losing my job uh, because of this virus has crossed my mind, and nobody has a really good job security at the moment. I mean, uh, I hope that at least you'll just get a pay cut or something like that. I mean, I wouldn't mind that at all if it's really bad. But um, I know there's also a lot of people around the world now who who don't even have that choice, who are getting laid off. Uh, businesses are suffering, uh, have to be shut down for weeks and weeks, and there's just no income, no way to pay your workers. Uh, in Malaysia, the main concern is foreign workers. Uh, they they usually have to work uh, to get paid, and if they don't work, they don't get paid. It's as simple as that. So they're not really protected very well, and yeah. And and usually they're staying together in large groups and dormitories so if one of them has the virus pretty much that would infect the whole bunch of foreign workers so it's uh, so far it hasn't happened in Malaysia yet but I just worry that it will <sighs> so I really feel for all the people who are having a really tough time being not just being stuck at home but also the potential loss of income uh, loss of jobs, loss of security, and just not knowing where this is going, and and yeah, I I just uh, for Malaysia, I think it's just gonna get a lot worse before it gets better, and uh, two weeks is definitely not gonna be enough to to contain this, and I think we made a lot of mistakes. Our government made a lot of mistakes. People are just not really aware of what's going on here, and uh, and there's only so much we can do, you know. Um, all we can do now is just watch and hope that the world doesn't really change all that much. But it is going to change. Things are not going to be the same as before. Um, and yeah, I hope everything just settles down through the next few months. So anyway, again, I've got to share it about this because, uh, you know, I haven't cracked open my bottle of vodka for a long time. I had this really nice bottle of vodka. Yeah, uh, it's empty, uh, half empty because I, I've drank some of it before and it's been sitting on my kitchen counter for quite a few months because I hardly drink. Uh, but I just thought, you know, uh, now's a good time to, you know, have a drink. <laughs> so cheers guys and take it easy.